Hello and a very warm welcome to our daily service. This week we're looking at the sad account of the fall of human beings in Genesis chapter 3 and our theme today is shame. Shame is a terrible reality but wonderfully it can be lifted from us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter in his first letter quotes these words. God says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Loving Father, as we hear your word read and spoken about today, help us to see our sin and our shame, but then wonderfully to see afresh our Saviour and all he gives to us, that we might be encouraged and strengthened in our service of him, to the glory of your name. Amen. King David certainly knew about the reality of sin and shame from bitter personal experience, but he put his trust in the Lord. We're going to read together the opening words of Psalm 25. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. We continue with our look at Genesis chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised that they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Perhaps the most famous sketch of Marcel Marceau, the brilliant French mime artist of the 20th century, featured him wearing a clown's mask with a huge smile on his face. He entertains the crowds and they're in stitches. And then in the sketch, Marceau goes behind the scenes and the clown's mask is still on. There's still a huge smile. But as the mask remains in place and he's smiling, Marceau finds he can't take the mask off, and so the whole of his body is writhing in agony while the smile remains. It's a picture of contemporary humanity. We present perhaps a smiling face to the world, but there's an agony within. With sin comes shame. Satan, the servant, had said to the woman that if she eats from the tree that God had said they shouldn't eat from, her eyes would be opened and she'd be like God. And sure enough, her eyes were opened. But the writer tells us their eyes were opened and they realised that they were naked and they're horrified. And now they try and cover themselves up. It's such a contrast from the wonderful image at the end of chapter 1 when we're told that they were naked and they felt no shame. It's a picture of perfect intimacy, a wonderful union of body, and I take it of soul as well. But there's no perfect intimacy like that 
in a fallen world. The complete openness of chapter 2 is replaced, very sadly, by evasion in chapter 3. They're hiding. They're hiding from themselves, first of all. In our sin, we don't like to look into the mirror for too long. We're worried what we might see, not just in our bodies, but in our hearts. And we like to live with the idea that we are good people. We're nice people. It's other people who are the terrible sinners. Oh, we admit we're not perfect, but we're not really bad. And then something happens that exposes us before ourselves and before others. And what do we do instinctively? Well, instinctively, we want to blame others. We point the finger, just as Adam does. Oh, the woman you put here with me. It's her fault. It's your fault, God. If you hadn't put her in this garden, I'd have been fine. And don't we do the same instinctively? It's the fault of my upbringing. Or it's the fault of that person. If they hadn't said that, then I wouldn't have reacted as I did. But how could I not after what they've done to me? We pass the blame. Because we don't like facing the reality of our own sin. We hide from ourselves. We hide from others. We don't want them to see us as we really are. Mark Twain famously said these words. Man is the only animal that blushes and needs to. He also said, everybody is a moon and has a dark side that they never show to anybody. And we have in Genesis chapter 3 the, the account of the first cover-up. They make clothes for themselves. And human beings have been covering up ever since. We don't want people to see us as we really are. We fear that if they saw what we're really like, they'd turn away from us in disgust. Yes, we hide from ourselves, we hide from one another, and we hide from God. There's a myth that we human beings are desperately seeking God, but God is hiding. He's playing hard to get. The reality, the Bible says, is the complete opposite. Do you notice in Genesis chapter 3 that God comes looking? Adam, where are you? And Adam is hiding. And down the years, human beings continue to hide from God. We, we're frightened that we might be exposed. As in our sin, we hide in God's amazing love. He keeps on looking, and he's come looking supremely in the person of his son, who didn't turn away from human beings in disgust. He knows our shame, but amazingly, he came and embraced it and took it upon himself. He did not run away from the cross, but rather he endured its shame, says the writer to the Hebrews. He took on the shame of nakedness on the cross as he took upon himself the punishment for our sin that he might give to us what we don't deserve, his robe of perfect righteousness. So if we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to hide anymore. We can face up to our sin knowing that in the Lord Jesus Christ it's been covered and our shame has been taken away. And that means we don't have to hide from ourselves. We don't have to hide from one another. We can be real and authentic and know an increasing intimacy. We praise God for this. But we also need to acknowledge that in ourselves, we're not fit to approach God. And so let's begin our time of prayer with a prayer of confession. Together we say, Lord, we are to blame, for we have not followed your law. We have not kept your commandments. We have not sought for you with all our heart. We have not walked in your ways, nor have we fully obeyed you. Lord, we long to be faithful and obedient. Do not put us to shame. Give us upright hearts. Teach us obedience. For Jesus' sake. Amen. The writer of the Hebrew says, Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame. And loving Father, how we praise you that Jesus was prepared to take on the shame of the cross 
that we might be freed from the guilt of sin and the horror of shame. We praise you for full and free forgiveness in Christ. Amen. Shame is the great enemy of intimacy. But wonderfully, once we put our trust in Christ, we can be sure that we're never alone. He's clothed us with his love. Our next song is called Never Alone. It's wonderful to know that the Lord Jesus knows everything about us. We can't hide from him. And yet he doesn't turn away. He drew near in love. He's forgiven us and we turn to him. He's accepted us. 
and we go into the rest of the day with him at our side. We're never alone. And so may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and all those we love now and evermore. Amen.